Hey everybody, welcome to week three of online social media class. Isn't it a blast? We're gonna do a real quick lecture now on some branding basics for social media. So here we go now. What's the ultimate sign of success for a brand? Is it money, stock prices, uh, ubiquity, being everywhere? Certainly these are all good things. But I would say that one sign of success for a brand is when your brand name becomes synonymous with the product itself. For example, you don't say I'm going to get a facial tissue, right? You say, give me a Kleenex. You don't say, could you pass me a tube of moisturizing lip balm? You say, do you have any chapstick? Uh, Q-tips, same thing. Band-aids, when kids get hurt. My five-year-old doesn't say, Dada, will you please give me an adhesive bandage to cover my wound? She says, no, give me a Band-aid. Uh, Post-it notes, same thing. And interestingly enough, Jet Ski is a brand. If you're writing a thing, that's not Kawasaki, then it's just a personal watercraft. But if it's Kawasaki, then congrats, you're riding a jet ski. So what do brands want on social media? Well, most want awareness, that is they just want you to know they exist. And then the second most popular goal is brands want to generate leads, that is a lead is somebody who's interested in the product who could become a customer. They want loyalty, sales, uh, and then finally some use it just for customer service. So if we think about brands on social media, um, it starts with a, a broad funnel from exposure and then to ultimately you wanna retain them as low customers, but there's fewer and fewer customers along the way at each stop. So first, if we go from left to right, uh, hey, I've seen your brand, I've been exposed to it, and then if you like it, maybe you engage with it, and then if you click, they get your data or maybe you provide contact info. And then maybe from there you purchase the product and if you like it, you keep purchasing the product. So the funnel gets narrower from left to right, right? If I do an ad for um, UTK, maybe a million eyeballs will see it. Maybe 500,000 will click on it. Maybe a, you know, a couple hundred will provide contact information and so on. So it's a funnel that gets narrower um, once we go down the, down the path. We covered this last week, but the general social media uh, breakdown, a lot of millennial-ish people uh, and a whole lot of youngins, and then actually half of grandparents on social media. That's, and I, the number is probably creeping up over time, especially as people age into like, you know, 50 to 64 year olds in five years, some of them will be here. Um, so social media, you can reach a lot of people. So we're gonna cover five strategies for social media branding. These are not exhaustive. These are not really comprehensive. These are just five things you can do for your, the final project in this class and for your homework this week, but also if you're a brand manager, if you wanna be a brand manager for social, um, for a company, these are five things you could work on, suggest uh, practical tips for uh, managing a brand's presence, voice, tone, and stuff online. Number one, start with the basics. Make sure your logo is consistent. This sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised. Make sure the colors are consistent from platform to platform. Make sure the biography is consistent. Uh, boilerplate, that's kind of the, the, the text that sounds uniform, like University of Tennessee Knoxville is a research, Carnegie designated research institution, right? The text and the description that you see in lots of different places, um, it's more public relations. Handle, right? The username, at UT Knoxville. If it's at UT Knoxville on Instagram, it better be at UT Knoxville on Twitter as well. So for example, Burt's Bees looks really similar in terms of color, font, on Twitter as it does on Facebook. That's good. So if you've found it on Twitter and you want to go see what their Facebook was like, you wouldn't waste time and brain power being like, is this the Burt's Bees that I think? You'd be like, yes, clearly this is the red font with the serif and the lines over and underneath it on the gold. This is Burt's Bees. So to start with the basics, you can do a social media audit 
we'll cover that in here a little more later, but basically to do a social media audit of your brand, pick a platform like Instagram, go through your last say 20 or 25 posts, make an Excel spreadsheet and just keep track of the engagement. How many likes did it get? How many comments? How many views? All this kind of stuff. When you do an audit like this, you can see what posts are working and what posts aren't. Make sure your logos, banners, and, and biographies are consistent with the brand guidelines. So whatever corporate decided, hey, this is gonna be our bio, this is our um, what our banners will look like, right? Make sure everyone's on the same page. And posting on a consistent schedule helps with consistency. So you'll make a content calendar to say, hey, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do an Instagram post. Every other Monday, we do a Facebook uh, page about um, whatever, new product launch, whatever it is. So planning out your, and you don't have to do this by hand, but you can plan out posts with Hootsuite or Sprout. There's a bunch of um, programs and platforms that where you can plug in, you can spend an hour, say, hey, program the whole month's worth of content, and then it'll post it for you. Two, extend visual branding. We're gonna cover visual communication next week, but again, this sounds obvious. Make sure you're using the same colors, literally the same like hex code and RGB values. Make sure you use the same fonts and videos, images, and graphics. Again, now that we talk about this, hopefully you notice some good and bad examples in the real world. Nike, for example, is amazing. Even if I blotted out the word Nike there, you would still, if you've seen an, any Nike ad before, um, Nike basically owns this. I think it's Futura Bold is that font. So when you see white Futura Bold on anything, you're like, that's a Nike ad. They did a good job of owning that space and having consistent visual branding in all of their content. So to start with, if your brand doesn't have one, you can create a visual brand guide with fonts, uses, and colors. Uh, uses there being, let's find that again. Like, hey, we use this font when we're doing a product launch. We use this font when we're doing something basic like announcing store hours. We have a different font when we're doing special like um, crisis or, uh, you know, one time off event type thing. Hey, the Super Bowl, we're doing this. So you can use different fonts for different occasions. You can create a graphic template for the same type of announcement. Again, so when we're doing a product launch, it's gonna look like this. When we're um, doing a, a seasonal thing that maybe only once or twice a year, right? Our Christmas page always looks like this, stuff like that. Make sure photos and videos maintain the brand aesthetic, so whatever the vibe. If you're an athletics brand, probably gonna have mostly fit looking people. Um, yeah, this stuff's kind of obvious, but it needs to be said. Um, it's pretty pretty key to the visual branding component. Number three, develop a marketing persona. What's a persona? Hmm, a brand's persona. What does that mean? Is it an avatar? It sounds kind of weird. You could probably come up with a definition in your own head, uh, but the technical, I think the short, the most succinct way to define this is a brand persona is a fictional representation of an ideal customer. So the persona for Ikea might be uh, young people in their 20s. Uh, the persona for Forever 21 might be like teen girls. The persona for... Um, I don't know, what's a Nick at Night or the History Channel or some old part might be like grandparents that want to watch that, that television content. So if you're UT Knoxville, what's your, post, your persona? Well, your ideal customer is probably a college student. So even though a college student can be any age, most of their students are, come in around 17, 18, 19 years old. So that would be the ideal or the typical customer they're going to reach. Now, do you have the same persona for all social media networks. Duh, no, of course you don't. Because as we learned last week, different platforms and different social media have different people on them. So Facebook skews a little older. Instagram is kind of millennial in the middle. TikTok, Snapchat, these things are younger. Twitter is more up-to-date information. It's not as much fun to use. Um, it's more of a utility, it's useful. So you might have a different, a slightly different persona for each 
uh, social media platform. For example, if you're a CrossFit gym in Knoxville, maybe this is your persona. It's a dude with a man bun, facial hair. He's a bro, he's 26, he takes care of himself. He talks a lot about CrossFit or paleo or whatever he's into. Maybe his name is Brad, maybe his name is Ian. But you would say, our persona is Ian, a 26 year old, I don't know, DJ who does CrossFit or something. You would come up with a whole uh, backstory and demographic traits for a persona for your brand on a certain platform. Maybe your persona for Facebook, if you're the same CrossFit gym, will be different. It'd be someone like me, like a middle-aged person who's like trying to like lose the spare tire or something. So your different personas for the same brand on different platforms because there's different people on different platforms. How would you start doing this? Well, you can map your existing customer base onto social media networks. So hey, we have reached people 18 to 45. We're gonna reach the 40 to 45 year olds over here, the 30 to 35 year olds here, uh, and then we'll use whatever Twitter to get everyone. <clears throat> Generate a persona for each and maybe use a listening query. So we'll cover, we're co we will cover social media listening later, but through active listening or maybe even an audit, you can see who is tracking and engaging with you on different platforms. You may notice, oh, we're actually getting a whole lot of um, middle-aged people engaging with us on, I don't know, Twitter or something, which you might not expect. Uh, but seeing who's engaging with you will help you generate a persona for each platform. And then finally, obviously, once you have your persona for each platform, you'll create content to match that persona. So if I've got Brad, the 26 year old bro who I'm reaching on Instagram, the content would be tailored to that. Hey, we got classes that are flexible. They're late in the afternoon because you wake up at noon because you're a DJ. Whereas maybe my content for Twitter for the middle aged person like me is like, hey, we got early classes that you can come do early, early in the morning before you got to wake up and get the kids. So the content matches the persona, which depends on the platform. Yeah, good stuff. Normally, right now, I would do a little intermission and show a Hollow Notes video but I can't do that because YouTube will do some copyright stuff, so we'll just move on. Four, establish your brand's tone and voice. After visuals, captions, and copy, copywriting or just the text, uh, are the very, very next most important piece of branding. So for example, is your brand formal or casual? Think about like a luxury car commercial like a Lexus or Mercedes or BMW, how those all sound very serious. Like, yes, this could make the, the December to remember with it. Get your loved one, the whatever. Versus like a Kia or a, um, Hyundai or, others, or other um, car brands. Is it silly or serious? Think about fine dining versus like Wendy's or McDonald's. Their social media accounts will be very, very different. Is it sarcastic or helpful? For example, Dove is empowering and uplifting, right? They encourage their audience. For example, they use affirmative language. You're not great, you're gorgeous, right? This is part of Dove's uh, tone and their voice of all their content. LaCroix, friendly yet informative. They inject a little personality. Hey, they're sparkling water. They have short, punchy statements that educate and charm. Yay. Also, I have a Corgi and he, I should put glasses on him now. Uh, professional ambitious. Ooh, look at this. Cloud Smarts is a tech company. High tech topics. Uh, non IT users. Blah blah blah. Their branding fits their their target audience uh, and who they service. <laughs> and finally, if you've seen a Skittles ad, you might describe it as so far out there, it's in another galaxy. Push way beyond the traditional idea of brand by embracing the weird, wacky, and irrelevant. Have you seen the ad where it's like, taste the rainbow, contract the rainbow? and the dude eats a Skittles and gets like Skittles acne. It's real weird, but they've decided this is our tone and voice. We're gonna be weird and it, it, it works. It makes them unique. And when you see, if I said contract the rainbow and you'd seen this recently, you'd be like, oh, I know that's, that's a Skittles um, tagline. How would you start this? If you don't have a voice and tone guide, you can develop it. Provide some adjectives, say, hey, this is who we are. This is what we sound like. This is um, the kind of voice and messaging we wanna to provide to the world, to our customers. Use a listening audit to verify what's working or not. You might notice a theme with social media. It's, it's iterative. You're always listening, getting feedback, and tweaking stuff based on engagement. So you try this. It doesn't work. Or maybe you experiment. You try something else. Well, that really didn't work. Okay, let's come back and try this. Now we'll go a different direction. You're always using, you're incorporating feedback into your 
creation generation process. So you can always be modifying, evolving, getting a little better over time. And make sure your social team is educated. Obviously, all the best guidelines in the world don't do any good if they're not in the hands or in front of the eyeballs of the people who are doing the posting for your social media. Okay. Number five, consider multiple accounts. This is maybe, this is for large brands, um, if you have different areas or focus. For example, UT Knoxville has a school-wide Instagram, a College of Communication Instagram, which is, we're narrowing in a little bit, right? The College of Communication is us and Ad PR and GEM and Com Studies uh, and Information Studies, Information Sciences. So there's four schools in there. And then you zoom in even more and Ad PR, our home college, has its own Instagram account. So each of these is reaching a different audience. UT, if they, had to, if they only had one UT Knoxville account and they tried to post content to reach all of us in different schools and departments and buildings, that would be crazy and you would probably not want to um, follow them because it would be half the time the content wouldn't apply. You'd be like, oh, I don't know them, get out of here. So depending on the size of your brand and the customer reach, uh, you might want to consider different accounts. Obviously not every, if you're a mom and pop hardware store, you're not going to need an account for the uh, power tools, an account for like super glue. Um, yeah. So examine your offerings to see if you should divide up focus. Each account should follow branding guidelines, um, but you might vary in tone. Again, to Matt, if you're reaching different personas on different platforms, the content may vary a little bit and ensure single ownership or creative control st structure. So who makes the call, who decides the voice, the tone, the guidelines, all these things. All right. Now go forth and enjoy the rest of the reading and creating this week. If you notice, don't, doesn't, now go forth. These words look weird, right? Because the rest of the presentation was clear, consistent uh, branding. And now the font's like orange and it's handwriting and it's underlined and it's italicized and it's weird. This branding is different than the rest of the lecture. It doesn't match, right? That's weird. So be on the lookout in the real world for branding that is inconsistent or branding that is really good and spot on. Have a great week.